Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Module 6 live session. It's hard to believe we reached the last module of the contracts course. Just a reminder, this course does end Tuesday, August the 10th. This week, we will be talking about blockchain, electronic money, and electronic contracts. You may be curious to know that in February 2021, Nevada Governor Steve Sisolak set forth plans to build an entire city on blockchain. One of the big beneficiaries of the governor's bill would be Blockchain's Limited Liability Company, which is a Nevada-based firm that has plans to build a city from the ground up on 67,000 acres of desert land it's acquired near Reno, Nevada. The company Blockchain's <laughs> envisions a painted rock smart city and an innovation park of at least 36,000 people with more than 30 million square feet of commercial an industrial space that would use stable coin, electronic currency only. It would only use cryptocurrency, no paper currency. So the, these are the cities of the future. They'll be built on blockchain technology. What is blockchain? <laughs> well, blockchain is basically a way to use high level programming and mathematics to make transactions over the internet more secure. It uses computer cryptography, which means that it uses um, binary codes to disguise information. The codes are extremely hard to break because of the mathematical methods and the programming that's involved. Some form of blockchain or other crypto cryptography will likely be built into business to business contracts for items that could otherwise be produced over and over again in a 3D printer. Let's talk about an example of how blockchain is going to work for commercial contracts. Let's say that business B, the buyer, needs 1,000 plastic parts and it signs an e-contract to buy them from business S, the seller. What if this is done by sending information to produce the parts to a 3D printer that is owned and controlled by the seller, but it's actually located at the buyer's location for convenience. What is to stop the buyer from taking control of the printer and making unauthor unauthorized duplicates? Well, a code would be needed that allowed the printer to produce only the correct number of parts. Otherwise, the, the seller would have to include in the contract a way to check up on what parts the buyer business has used over and over again after the transaction. So that's a way that uh, blockchain technology can be used in a commercial contract. Let's talk about cyber currencies. You probably heard about Bitcoin. Um, the best way to learn about cyber currencies is to learn about them hand on. Hands on, I would actually recommend if you have time, if you actually want to learn about cyber currencies to download Coinbase on your phone. It is a, a free app. If you're actually interested in using Coinbase, you would need to make a small investment and you would learn hands-on how to invest in Bitcoin. Um, if you're really interested, I would say only start with maybe $100 if you actually want to learn hands-on what Bitcoin is. What is a cyber currency? like Bitcoin. It's a digital currency that is based on blockchain technology. It is investment security. A cyber currency like Bitcoin works as a medium of exchange wherein an individual, your ownership of the coin, those are stored in a ledger that's used and kept in a computerized data Base, which is secured with cryptography to secure the transaction records. The most popular cyber currency that I know about is Bitcoin. But there are many, many others popping up on the free market. There have been um, some issues <laughs> involving Bitcoin and um, its ability to be used by ransomers. Um, in 2021, there have been more cyber attacks and ransomware 
attacks than probably we've ever seen before. Hackers are exploiting security weaknesses and holding the data of companies, governments, and even healthcare organizations hostage, sometimes demanding tens of millions of dollars in payment using um, cyber currencies. So all of, the, of all the cyber and ransomware attacks in 2021 that we've seen so far in the news, the breach of Colonial Pipeline in late April probably had the most news coverage. Taking the system down by the hackers, disrupted gas supplies all along the East Coast, caused chaos, panic, gas shortages, and ultimately higher prices at the pump. You may have seen photographs of people down in Florida um, trying to buy gas and putting it in plastic bags and storage containers, and, you know, for fear that there would be a gas shortage due to the hack and the security breach of Colonial Pipeline. Eventually what happened is Colonial Pipeline gave in to the hackers' demands for a ransom and paid the hackers, known as the Dark Side Gang, $4.4 million in Bitcoin. Let's talk about e-signature, click wrap, and electronic contract laws. In the past, signatures have always been applied by hand to a contract or a document by the signer. <laughs> Today, as a result of the e-sign act, Electronic signatures are sufficient to form an enforceable agreement. State laws are going to vary as a requirement for e-signatures, so be sure to look up the laws in your state. What is click wrap? If you've ever purchased anything on the internet, you've probably dealt with click wrap, you know, by using your mouse to click. Click wrap is an informal term, term for way to access the contract terms of an internet sale. The consumer is prompted to click on the terms and then read them. There are various levels of click wrap. Some require that the customer do a specific click on and then an agree button before getting to the final checkout and payment so that you are aware of the terms when you provide your consideration, your payment for the contract. So that's click wrap. It's an informal way for a customer to access the contract terms of an internet sale using your um, your mouse. Let's talk about your module six written assignment, which gives you a chance to hands on apply the principles of blockchain and safe purchasing. In this scenario, Molly and Jacob Hansen are planning to expand their personal sales business to allow them to sell more products online. They create customized placement placemats for celebrations. They are considered in doing it all on their own. They are also considering becoming small business partners of a large company so that their items can be sold on a website similar to Barnes and Nobles, Amazon, Walmart, or Target. So they want to list with these big companies. Because they're also buyers and consumers on the internet, they're curious about the consumer side of the transaction. Molly and Jacob come to your law firm asking for information and advice about blockchain, cryptocurrency, and safe purchasing. So you will need to research the following items. Address the answer to the attorney Herbert Block. Be sure to write this as a memo with a to, from, and ray line. Use the numbers below to structure your answer. And uh, don't actually repeat the questions, but organize your answer around these questions. Be sure to cite to each source in the body of your paper using the Indiglo Blue Book format. Go ahead and include a references page as well. First, identify a current article and a case involving blockchain or cryptocurrency. List the topics that it covers, cite it using the blue book. And when I say list, I do mean discuss using standard sentence structure and paragraph format. Two, research three current statutes that make electronic commerce easier for the merchant. 
cite them using Blue Book. And to find those statutes, I would recommend using Lexis Advance. You don't get anything there. Go straight to Google and research it. Three, identify and cite an article on safe purchasing of consumer goods and services online. Discuss the article. What safety methods do you recommend after reading this article? That article could actually be located on Google just by doing a natural language search. This assignment is due on Tuesday, August 10th at midnight. That's when the term ends. Module six, you also have a cumulative quiz that covers all the topics that we've discussed in this five and a half week course. I just took the quiz and got a 100. So it is possible for you to also make an A or at least pass this quiz. Here are some of the terms you should know. Blockchain. Review the information on warranty of title and the implied warranty of mercantility. Review what we talked about concerning express warranties. Review the contract defenses of incapacity, illegality. Make sure you know what an electronic currency is. Other terms you should know. Fraud is a contract defense. What is click wrap? We just talked about it. What are the elements of a contract? Offer, acceptance, and consideration. That's all you need to have a valid contract. Remember what we talked about in terms of grammar and legalese. Know what the active voice is in your sentence versus the passive voice. Be sure you know what an e-signature is. Review the statute of frauds under the UCC. There are differences between the statute of frauds at common law and the statute of frauds that has been codified in the UCC. Um, make sure you know what those differences are and understand under the statute of frauds, the contract needs to be evidenced by a writing or a series of writings. It could be in a commercial transaction. It could be a series of emails that evidence the contract. A series of writings can satisfy the statute of frauds. It does not all have to be in one document under the UCC. Be sure you know the difference between an oral contract and a written contract. Oral contracts are enforceable. Attorneys would prefer a written contract because it's easier to determine the terms and it's easier to prove in a court of, court of law. Be sure you know what a service contract is as opposed to the contract for the sale of goods. Be sure you know what Lexis Advance is. It is a premier legal research services provider. Understand that plain language is preferable to legalese. Remember, we talked about the attorney's legal and ethical obligations to unrepresented persons. And we also talked about whether minors have the capacity to contract. So that's it for the quiz review. Be sure to study hard. Remember, summer term one ends Tuesday, August 10th. Please be sure to submit all of your assignments by Tuesday. No assignments can be accepted for a grade after Tuesday at midnight, unless you have already had your incomplete grade approved. Again, it's been a pleasure working with all of you and having you in the contract law classes term. It's been a lot of fun. I know a lot of you are interested in continuing on to law school after you obtain your paralegal certificate. If so, I would recommend that you watch these two movies. Paper Chase and Legally Blonde. One of my students actually gave me a copy of Legally Blonde as a gift when I turned 30. That was the first time I'd ever seen the movie. But if you are truly, um, if you've enjoyed the contracts class and you want to delve more into what it would be like to go to law school, definitely watch The Paper Chase and Legally Blonde. I think those movies are, are very accurate portrayals of what it's like to go to law school. Thanks again for all of your hard work this term. I know the contracts course has been challenging and best of luck to you next term. Have a great week.